Ah, it's that time again. Time for another solo overnighter in the woods. And I'm thinking we do a day hike gone wrong, which creates an emergency overnighter. Let's get to it. Most channels that have been around for several years, a decade or more, they know what they're doing or tend to know what they're doing. They've researched their areas and certain gear to carry. And for the most part, they give solid advice. Um, one thing I've seen people leaning more towards now, and a lot of it is because either they're becoming irrelevant and they're trying to stay relevant. So they tend to change the category or genre that they're in. Like if they're bushcrafters or survivalists, they're trying to go down the prepper road to get views. So their gear tends to change to fit that. And that's okay. The others are people who are trying to sell you things. So they're gonna add that to their gear list to make you buy it. Therefore, increase your loadout. Make sense? Now, I'm a firm believer, and I've always said this, even a camping pack should be around 25 pounds as a base weight. Recent videos, I'm showing you that you can actually dial that down to between 10 and 15 pounds, then add your food. Now, it's based on comfort. If you're the kind of person that says, well, I gotta have a blow up mattress and I gotta have this, I gotta have two wool blankets and I gotta, well then you're the kind of person that most likely drives around in the side by side and talks a big game, okay? The person who actually goes out and hikes is not gonna carry two wool blankets. They're not gonna carry a roll up or a blow up mattress this big around. They're not gonna add 25 more pounds to their kit just to do it. Along with that, you're not gonna carry a 35 to 40 pound pack to go fishing for the day or a simple day hike. You wanna roll with the bare minimum. And a good indicator of that, look at all the ultralight guys. To them, ounces mean everything. And these guys hike hundreds if not thousands of miles each year and survive and are comfortable because they're trained and they use their gear. Now, I'm not an ultralight hiker. I'm probably never gonna go down that road. But can you get by with 10 to 15 pounds, 20 at the most, preferably a day hike around 10 to 15 and be comfortable, have all your needs met and walk out the next morning. I think we can. So on that note, let's get started. Like I mentioned, I'm not an ultralight hiker. And I'm not gonna be, but I like their theory. Ounces make the difference. I got two knives here, one from my pocket, one from my hip. This one here is the Ranger Grip 79 by Victor Knox, showing it to you hundreds of times. The other one here is a Sloyd knife with Jeff White, and it's 330 seconds in thickness, about a three and a half inch blade, fits my hand perfectly, and will do exactly what I want it to do. I can carve whatever I want, make a bow drill set, carve some steaks, I can do all that, cut some meat, I can do that too. Um, I need a saw, it's on my Victor Knox. So as far as cutting tools go, my needs are met having two of these. Moving along here, I have my cook set. This is my stainless steel corner corner bottle, it's a wide mouth bottle, nesting cup and fork. Now, as I've said before, this bottle right here, it can be plastic. And if you're truly keeping with the theme of ultra light, you probably want a plastic bottle. Why? Because you can treat this with chemicals. You can also boil the water in this and transfer it to a plastic bottle. So the important takeaway is as long as I have one stainless steel implement, meaning a container, to disinfect by boiling, I'm good to go. During an emergency, I'm not gonna screw around with ferro rods. I'm not gonna screw around with flint and steel. And I've seen the arguments that people think that flint and steel is actually a skill. In my opinion, on a skill list, zero being zero and 10 being the best, the amount of skill it requires for flint and steel is a one or a two. And here's why. You're striking a rock, making sparks. 
if I go down, the sparks go up. If I hold the steel and hit it, the sparks go down. There's your skill. 12 inch drop, boom, 12 inch drop, boom, done, okay? So it's not rocket science. The problem or the skill comes in when you're making the char cloth or char material. And then the real skill is storing that so there's no moisture, no water, it doesn't get crushed into powder, so you can actually use it at a later date. So why would I carry foot and steel out that gives me minimal spark and worry about char cloth or char material when I can carry a ferro rod? Ferro rod's more of a guarantee. But a 100% guarantee is open flame from a Bic lighter, okay? A real guarantee in an emergency, which doubles as a signaling device, is a road flare. So if I can't get fire because things are wet with a Bic lighter in emergency, I know I'm guaranteed to get it with this. When I'm done getting my fire, I can snuff it out and use it in conjunction with my lighter, relight it, and now I can signal for rescue. So you got a two for one right here. It's really a three for one. Multiple use, emergency fire, and emergency signaling. So let's move on to cordage. I got number 36 bank line. This is almost a complete roll. And it's a one pound roll. Now, I don't like this for something like ultralight because it's too damn big. It takes up more room. And if ounces count, then we need to go to something smaller. Now they do make a hundred foot roll, I believe it is, a small one. But the more important thing is there's something called a spool tool. And I ordered one. It didn't get here in time for the video. Here's a picture of it right here. This thing has a built-in X-Acto knife razor blade to cut the cordage to the length that you want. It's also got a holder for a lighter. So something like that, where you can wrap 100 feet onto it and toss it into a pack or a day bag or your cargo pocket, that right there is money. Next item here is a compass. Now. There's two different types. There's a lensetic compass, which is a military compass or a base plate compass. I put out last week's video, which was an example of an online classroom format. And we talked about how to use a compass in order to walk a straight line and avoid lateral drift. So if you don't know how to do that, check out that video. Here's what the thumbnail looks like. Bottom line, if you knew nothing about a compass, but you could dial in a cardinal direction, meaning north, east, south, or west to the top line, and put the red in the shed and walk that straight line, at some point you're gonna find something or someone and it will prevent you from walking in circles. So having some type of compass that will allow you to walk a straight line, worth its weight in gold. For me, I wanna be hands-free and yes, I have a new headlamp. It's the same one as before, LED Lenser MH8 has three functions on it low, medium, high, and the fourth option is a strobe. Twisting the front of this lens right here will actually focus it from this down to a spotlight. It's rechargeable, or it can take batteries. So, the important takeaway, hands-free, and that you have something to illuminate your way in case you have to walk out at night or early morning. At the very least, look around at night, start hearing some noises or whatever, or doing some type of tasks at night, you have some kind of option. Next two items here, one inch roll of Gorilla Brand duct tape. I'm still playing around with this stuff here. Um, to be honest, in all the years of using this duct tape, I have yet to use it for anything, 100% truth, other than fire starting in inclement, meaning damp weather conditions. I've stuck it on my clothing before, and at some point it gets dirty and it falls off. There was ideas floating around that you could use it, kind of like how you suture, you put one on one side of the cut, one on the other side of the cut, and thread you know, line in between there and pull it tight like a shoe. If you got hair on your arms, it tends to want to peel right off. If your arms are dirty or sweaty, it peels right off. Um, I've seen butterfly bandages made with this. In theory, it works. Again, if it's sweaty or dirty, it peels right off. So there's ups and downs to this, but 
it's 100% legit for a bird's nest, meaning tiny eighth inch uh, pieces being taken off and creates a bird's nest, a duct tape bird's nest, or rolled into small cigar shapes that will burn for 15 minutes. I've shown you that several times and it's legit. So why not carry something for an emergency? Along with that, we have our three by three orange shamog. The number one thing I've always used this for over the years, it's tied with a second option. The first one, placing it over the water bottle, putting it in the stream and draining off debris before you disinfect it by boiling. Number two, but ranks up there just as much, hanging it from a tree and creating a waypoint so I can walk around wherever I want. As long as I can turn around and see this, I can come back to my base camp. I'm gonna make this clear because I know I said it and I know what I meant. It was gonna be somebody going, aha, he said he didn't want to carry something this big around and it's that big around. No, I was referring to weight, okay? And I'm not gonna carry a blow-up mattress into the woods that, that is this big around, that I know at some point can get popped or not work, when this right here is a half inch thick, accordion style, just lay it down, you know, silver or yellow, and I can fold it right back up again. This thing weighs ounces, not pounds, and it's not bulky. It's gonna go down to about this size right here. It can be strapped to the bottom or top of a pack. And if I am gonna go out on a day hike, I'm gonna carry something like this, simply because if I wanna stop for an hour or two, or half hour, have lunch next to a creek or a stream, and say there's mud, I don't wanna sit in the mud. I might wanna lay down and take a nap next to the water, just listen to the water, and just drift off, and just relax, and just decompress from the hard week. So something like this will keep you off the ground. It prevents conduction, or your body's contact with the earth, taking the heat away. Um, so why not carry this? This is the same one I've had in my videos for the past four and a half years, and it's still going strong. When I think about day hikes, or I think about ultralight camping, you gotta go where the science is, okay? And today's science is freeze-dried everything. The problem with most freeze-dried is the calorie intake. It says one serving, you look at it, it's like 300 calories. It's like, well, that's not going to do me any good at all. I need to eat like 10 of those. But the context is it's an emergency. It's something in your stomach to give you energy or to keep it from gnawing on itself. It's a morale booster. Um, so along those lines, you need to think of conditions that you're in. If you're, unless you're carrying a camp stove, which I'm not, because it adds extra weight, and you can't get a fire going because of stormy conditions, high winds, rain, snow, but you brought food that you can't cook, you're kind of screwed. So you gotta think of it like that. I want items that I can just add water to, in this case, freeze dried. It won't be warm, but I could add water to it and eat it. Or just simply open the package or can and eat it just like that because it's fully cooked. So you gotta be prepared for the worst and hope for the best. Today's choices, we have a single serving of Spam Classic. And this one right here was actually sent to me a year ago, and I apologize because I just found it in a drawer. It fell behind the backside of it, and it's my mistake. Now, on Etsy, now hear me again, I didn't say my Etsy. On Etsy, there's a store called Flaming Shamrock Farm, and they specialize in freeze-dried egg whites or regular eggs. There's two choices, just the whites or the full egg. It's a one-to-one -one mix and you have basically scrambled eggs. Adding heat to it, you have warm scrambled eggs. No heat, you still got scrambled eggs. Just like this can of ravioli. Add heat to it, it's already cooked. I have warm ravioli. If not, I can eat it out of the can. And the same with the Spam. So we're prepared for all conditions, and we have food that will get us through the day. Best part is, the more freeze-dried items you bring, the less weight you have. Both of these weigh probably less than this. Yes, sir, and to prove our point, we're gonna eat it from the can. Not bad at all. Need some Tabasco, we'll call it good. On that note, get you all with you.
So honestly, it's just like we talked about. It's an oversized poncho. It's looking like some type of inspector gadget like overcoat. Um, so judging how long this is, we're gonna get that eight feet in width, four foot wide and four foot tall. And what's kind of cool about this is it goes together with a zipper. So you can just unzip it and zip it back up. Got the hood. If you wanted to, you can zip it all the way to your face. And the best part is because it's oversized, all that water is going to go down to your feet. So, yeah, I mean, it'll work. All we're going to do is gonna lay it out like this. We're going to stake out the corners in the back side and then run a pole to this reinforced area right here. It could be a trekking pole. It could be a tent pole. In this case, I'm going to take a stick, four foot in length, run it right up inside there and raise it up. All right, so here's the verdict on this. It is about eight feet. I'm laying here with my head touching this wall and the higher you are, it slopes upwards. So if I were to lay down here, there's a good probably 18 inches left on that side over there and about six inches over here. So it's right around eight feet in length and four foot high. Now, as far as them getting four feet width, it looks like about three and some change. Um, but there's also space behind me. So can I get my gear inside here? Yes. Can I get it behind me over here? Yes. Enough room for two people. Um, if you're gonna spoon, probably. But here's the beauty of this shelter. This is one poncho. If you have two, you can zip it together and put this other half, like a military shelter half, on that side over there in which case you could get person on this side and get a person on this side so there's benefits to something like this if you and a partner are carrying a poncho like this say you're doing the ultralight hiking or just day hike and it starts to rain get in here zip it up and get out of the elements you got holes here where the arms are now they are longer and they aim downwards so the water should run off and work as a vent hole are you going to get condensation? Most likely. Lay in here like this with a fire over here. You're going to collect that heat. If the rain picks up, I can hunker back. However, if it blows inward, I'm probably going to get wet. But that's the chance you take sleeping outside in the woods.
it doesn't get much simpler than that. A road flare for an emergency fire starter. The beauty is those things burn for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, depending on the size that you buy. And if it's wet weather and it's raining, it might take a minute and a half. But you can take it once you're done and the fire's lit and actually just snuff it out against a rock or in the mud and then just relight it at a later date using a lighter. And it can be used for a signaling device. So again, it's multi-use and on dry stuff like that, it goes up in seconds. So why not carry it? And then the last thing here before we hit the rack, um, we have our Buckeye Bushcraft Modern Skills Survival Course the first week of May. Gives you about two weeks notice. I've been pushing it since around December and I believe we have three or four spots left and it's going to be a full class. So it's in Chesapeake, Ohio. So check that out. Modern Skills Survival Course at Buckeye Bushcraft and that link is inside my video description box. On that note, I'm going to add some wood to this and catch you all in the morning. That's still the best part of my day. Lay out here, wake up to something like that. Let's go ahead and talk about the shelter real quick before we get out of here. It did exactly what it's supposed to do. Campfire is one full step away. We got our rock fire ring to keep all the coals right there. The heat's coming right over here. We're moving towards summertime. So you can get by with just a jacket or poncho liner, um, something to that effect. Real lightweight, even a Helicon Swag Man roll. Now, if you had two of these, like we talked about, you can make a full teepee and sleep two people inside here with all your gear. The only problem I see with this, and someone else is gonna say, like we talked about, if the wind blows this direction with rain, you're gonna get wet. Well, if you go to the woods thinking you won't get wet or, you know, muddy or dirty or ticks or any of that, you probably just stay home. That's just the harsh reality. You open yourself up to that and you know, going into it, that could happen. So, when we take all that nonsense out, the one real problem I see, as with most ponchos and rain gear, is your skin's breathability. Something this long, like a trench coat that goes all the way down to say mid calf. Now, granted, if you have a backpack on, the backside of it's going to be higher, so it will vent more. But if you're walking or planning to walk one, two, three, four miles, wearing something like this because of the rain, what's going to happen is you're going to start sweating. Your body's going to release that heat. It's going to want to evaporate but not be able to, so it's going to condense on the inside. It's going to soak your clothes. And what you're trying to prevent getting wet will happen anyways. But then something called prickly heat happens. Your body can't release it and cool down, so your pores open up. And it feels like needles just going all over your back, your skin, your arms. And it lasts for days, sometimes weeks afterwards. It's not a good thing. It used to happen in the military all the time with their first and second generation Gore-Tex. You wear that, you start sweating, and you wish you were dead. So being around base camp, walking short distances, hanging out, hunting for the day. Um, maybe you're doing some kind of work outside, localized areas. Perfect over a long distance might be a problem. Last thing real quick before we get out of here is cup and bottle sets. They're arriving this week. So next Sunday's video, they're gonna drop. So look for those on my Etsy store. Until then, we have our hat patches, bag patches. We have the last of the zip and pullover hoodies. We have forks and the meat forks in there as well. Um, I'm currently shipping all of those drive hooks this week. And then we'll make room for another 50 or a batch of 50 the following week. So once again, my Etsy link is inside my video description box. Check her out. On that note, let's get out of here because I have to finish editing this video and drop it in exactly uh, four and a half hours. 
So with that, all the gear in my videos can be found on two places, one my Amazon affiliate page and two my Etsy store. Both links are found inside my description box. So please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm gonna catch you next time.